Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about unit tests. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, do you feel written unit tests serve as a good regression test suite? De depends on the unit test, I would say. It's a, uh, this is a, uh, I actually had this talk yesterday with a few of my teammates where we've had a issue or a very long running issue with regression problems and stability issues uh, related to our release processes and so forth and so forth and our QAs have been sort of dreading uh, increasing release velocity and because basically I've been putting a little bit of pressure and said that uh, I, I've said that the current lead times that we have is a little bit too long. It takes much longer than what we want to release something into production. And that of course means that the QA feels a little bit of stress because the team has gotten into this habit of where the developers, uh, which is something you should watch out for, the developers do some coding on their side and then they throw it over the wall. And then now it's the QA's, this, uh, QA's job basically to figure out if, something's, if everything is working or not. And at the same time, these um, software developers don't really write any unit tests. Now, the problem is that when I, I've talked to them about it and I said that this is something that they should do, they express very accurately that, well, yeah, we need to write unit tests, right? But a lot of the stuff is, you know, we don't really have to test if a controller is doing something. It's like if it's logic, it's logic. Otherwise, we don't have to test it. And then I say, well, I have checked the repo. And there is not a single unit test in the code, or like in the test folder, in for the la for about the oldest one is from two years ago. So you're telling me that in the two years that this product has lived since well, before, way before I started, there has not been a single regression or single bug or anything like that related to the code. Now I know for a fact that that is not the case. And so they accurately say, well, yeah, but that's not necessarily something that has to do with unit testing. No, that is true. But the thing is that if you create a habit around not writing unit tests, you won't get any practice. It's like I like to tell people that it's sort of like parents or forcing their kids to brush their teeth or clean their room or people going to the gym. Uh, there are more people who own gym membership cards who say that they're going to work out, you know, every so often or when they have time. And But there's not that many people who actually are fit. Because if you don't build a habit around the thing you're doing and you do it in a wishy-washy way, it's very likely that you're going to stop doing it. And so I tell people, that's why I tell people the because uh, I do t talk to people a lot about testings in some cases and it's not because I want to it's because it's uh, because I'm not really much of a I mean I it takes extra time etc et so it's a cost you don't really want to pay but the reality is that if we were in this scenario want to increase our velocity and we want to have greater security within our system we need to to be able to do this and we need not just to do it we need to be good at doing it because the problem with unit testing and I've had this conversation this is extremely true for the front-end developers uh, they literally suck at it and you see the thing is a poorly written test and that's not a test that isn't you know uh, 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 the, the, because the, that's the feedback that I, you know, I got from the. In this case, these, these were backend developers, and they said, you know, I don't see any reason to test, uh, for example, the endpoints of my API. And I said, well, so a few of the bugs that we've had has been due to breaking changes. So I agree. Maybe you don't necessarily have to test that. I don't know a controller gets hit with a certain network call and then a function gets called which is your service layer or something like that but what you should be testing is that your contract is intact and they, they go oh yeah but that's more of a integration test yeah are you using those no of course not and that's my problem Th that's the problem where unit test like the, this is why people there's a, something we call the testing pyramid if it doesn't matter if you write unit tests 
integration tests, uh, if you use visual regression tests, if you use end to end tests, that is all besides the point. If you don't have people who understand two things basically, number one, what is the feature about? What is the desired outcome? If you don't understand the domain or what you're trying to achieve, you can't write a good unit test, because that's what, what that's usually what the very bad the developers who are really bad at writing unit tests. They they write code, and then they write a test that just checks that their code is doing whatever the code is doing, but they're not actually writing a test that validates that the feature is working correctly, which is a big difference, and that that nuance is very difficult for a lot of software developers to figure out. And that brings us to the second point. They don't actually write a test that asserts the thing that might go wrong. So an example would be as you were saying, oh yeah, like, but I can write a test, it's point is to write a test that just tests if a function is called. Yeah, it is uh, really pretty pointless if you only care about what a, a certain function gets called but uh, the function itself then the business logic that it is executing and the fact that it persists the state to the database correctly and that the endpoint is there and as I said the contract like if for a classic one is like I have to this day never seen a software team that by default makes sure that their API specification actually is part of their testing process because they that's what we call a contract test so if you and this is what usually happens software developers they change the API without thinking about it push it into production and now they have a breaking change for the downstream systems uh, and that can be fixed by them simply making sure that their API spec is running towards the endpoint and that the serialized like the the, the JSON representation of what or whatever they're using of their re response from their endpoint actually is the thing that they are expecting nobody does that or very few do it by default and this is what I'm talking about that's more important to have developers who understand how do I assert that the system is working I don't it doesn't matter if it's a unit test an integration test or if it's whatever the purpose of a test is to assert that the feature is expecting as intended and developers who don't practice that mindset and figure out all right these are the things that I have to check so that they don't fail doesn't matter if they write unit tests or not because they are just going to fill up the whole code base with unit tests that do some arbitrary thing and it's especially true if they're bad at it like my favorite one is that you see people write tests that are complete like they're basically just checking so it's something completely arbitrary has has no impact whatsoever uh, or like they mock things to a point where they're basically testing their own mocks that's a no value test it doesn't check anything meaningful and that's why the practicing of unit testing starts out with people writing really shitty tests and that's the ha half of the problem but the other part uh, which is the true solution to this is as I've said you have to practice it that's one part but you also have to understand the features and you have to be product minded because if you're just a code monkey your test will basically always suck so what I want you to take away from this is that unit tests are a way uh, is a good way to check for regressions and to end test um, like all the, because it depends on what type of regression you're looking for the, I like to tell developers that the, the, the goal is to get as close as possible to the thing that can fail. In other words, end-to-end -end tests is, a, for example, a very good way to check if the overall system is working, but it's a really shitty way to figure out if some there's a bug somewhere in the code. And the closer you can get to like, uh, where the bug might be found, and that's a layered thing. Unit test is the lowest level where your logic might be flawed or you might be have, you do something incorrect in an incorrect fashion. That's a very good test to write if you have logic that might be fairly sophisticated. But if the problem might be that, I don't know, you might have a database, sche a database schema or something that, or an API schema or something like that that changes involuntarily, then you have to kick it up a level. You have to go up a level from the unit test into doing an actual integration test. It really comes down to you figuring out where are these weak spots in your design, what your system might actually do incorrectly. And that requires a software developer who understands product development and understands how the system is intended to work? How is the feature intended to work? Because anybody can write a unit test that does absolutely nothing. So 
that's my point. Number might take these things away from from this. You want to get good at writing good regression tests, regardless of if it's unit tests or whatever it is. Number one, make sure that you understand what the feature is about and which sort of test is necessary to assert that that thing is working, and then practice writing tests because everybody sucks at it at first but the better you get at it the less of these like arbitrary silly tests that you like, might actually not need will like they will you will have less of those and you will have fewer tests but they will be valuable tests that actually capture things that will break if you're not careful have a great day